Okay, so when we're talking about um, putting, uh, moving uh, knowledge concepts into long-term memory, uh, there's a category in your book called Moving Information to Working Memory, the Role of Attention, and we need to talk about that because attention is a major issue. The definition is actually focusing of mental processing on particular stimuli. All right, in the model of memory, the first step in this process is attention. So in order for information to get to long-term memory, it must pass through the sensory register and working memory. If it never gets there, it doesn't have a chance at long-term memory. So attention plays an important role in this process. It actually moves the information from sensory register to working memory. I remember I taught with a teacher one time where the kids were down crawling in the floor and while she was up teaching. And I asked her if she thought that was very effective, and she said they were absorbing the information in their own way. That's kind of odd to me. Um, whatever someone mentally pays attention to moves into working memory. That's why when we're doing a lot of the rote memory things, and I don't have to concentrate on it, it just comes uh, automatically through automaticity. That's why um, I don't put a lot of that into long-term memory. That's why a lot of the rote learning doesn't make it to, um, if any, makes it to long-term memory. If information in the sensory register doesn't get a, a person's attention, it presumably disappears from the, the memory system. Um, paying attention involves directing not only the appropriate sensory receptors in the eyes, ears, etc., but also the mind toward whatever needs to be learned and remembered. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. But does that necessarily mean I'm listening? I would imagine in church sometimes you are looking at the pastor, but are you truly listening to what he said if he should stop and say, repeat what I just said, which our pastor has done a couple of times? <laughs> Is he going to get you caught where you weren't paying attention? Young children's attention often moves quickly from one thing to another and is easily drawn to objects and events unrelated to the task at hand. They're easily distracted. Um, so also know that that attention is going to be quickly in and out, in and out. Um, research says one minute times their age. That is the amount of the attention span. So if you have a five-year-old, you have five minutes before that child is distracted, ready to do something else. Now, do I think at, at 46 years old that you have 46 minutes with me? No, I think even as adults, we get to a point where uh, our attention span is limited. I don't think it goes, you know, just because we're getting older, it's going to get longer. I think it gets to a point, and then it's 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 at its max. As children grow older, they become better able to focus their attention on a particular task and keep it there, and they're less distracted by irrelevant thoughts and events. Yet even adult learners can't keep their minds on a single task all the time and you know you're doing the same thing I wonder at this point about halfway down about halfway through this lecture how many of you have your mind has has gone to something else I've said something that's triggered and maybe when I said something about church your mind went there and for a, a couple sentences you didn't hear a thing I said I bet you're grinning right now even when learners are paying attention, they can attend to only a few small amount of information at any one very small amount of information at any one time. The attention does have unlimited capacity, so we need to keep that in mind. And people can often perform two or three well-learned automatic tasks at once. When a stimulus or event is detailed and complex or when a task requires considerable thought, then people can usually attend to only one thing at a time. Remember when I said, when I was talking about automaticity, if you've already heard that lecture, I was talking about brushing my teeth and how I don't have to walk myself through the, through the process now. It's automatic. I do it. I can brush my teeth and do another task. I can multitask, but if something detailed and complex, can't do it. As teachers, we must remember that attention isn't just a behavior, it's also a mental process. Uh, also remember, I think I might have told you this um, in, in class the other day, it's been one of your best teaching days. We talked about, you know, if on my best teaching days and your best learning days, you still only remember half. So let's say it's been one of your best teaching days, which means your students receive one of the best math lessons you've ever taught. Now, Mary, a student in your class, had a fight with her best friend right before coming to your math class. Now, with all that being said, you're on your best day. Um, the students, are, you know, are, are ready to grasp, um, and they got one of the best lessons you've ever done, but Mary's got this issue with a friend. How far in the three-component model of memory do you think your lesson went? Where do you think your teaching got to with Mary that day? Uh, text me your answer.